welcome to Butterflies of Wisdom, everyone. I know you just heard my voice, but um, this is a day for some entrepreneurship, back-to-back interviews. But I do have Connie with me. Connie is going to talk about switching to gluten-free, and Connie's our expert on switching to gluten-free. So without further ado, I'm going to Connie, take it away. Thank you, Lynn. Um, thanks for having me on. And just to explain a little bit more about what I do is I'm a coach um, for women that are newly diagnosed with gluten intolerance and other food allergies. So I empower them in switching to a completely gluten-free lifestyle um, and to go from struggling to thriving. And may I ask, why did you get into this film? I got into this because I live with this on a day-to-day basis. And okay. about, yeah, about nine years ago, um, I figured out I was gluten intolerant through a roundabout roundabout way. It wasn't very um, direct even finding that out. And then also um, I started eating um, what a lot of people refer to as the traditional gluten-free diet, which is what we've all been told, you you know, you take this out and this is how you eat gluten-free now. And um, I wasn't feeling better. Um, And I went to, you know, a couple of functional doctors, but a lot of them still told me to eat, eat the same way. So I was feeling really good. And then nine months, I would, you know, start feeling like I'd eaten gluten again. Um, and I probably was, but I didn't know that at the time. So um, there's a lot of myths and myths, myths around gluten and what is eaten completely gluten-free and things like that out there. So um, it was a real struggle and challenge for me at times. And I had a great doctor that diagnosed me, but, you know, after that, I sort of had to figure a lot of things out on my own. And it, um, I didn't really have anywhere to go for support. Um, since a lot of the gluten-free um, groups I knew here actually ate just, you know, they took wheat, barley, and rye out. And the thing that really got my health back onto the road but yet blew my mind at the same time was I find out that all grains have gluten. So um, that's why I got oh. into this. <laughs> oh, my God. So you're saying all grains have gluten. So yes, they, all grains have gluten, if, um, contrary to what we've been told. <laughs> if you become gluten intolerant, you have to go to Dr. Google or have people work with you because you're debunking the myth. I am, and, and there's a lot of people who tell you that I'm wrong <laughs> and I don't know what I'm talking about and that, you know, um, the resources that I trust, you know, like that I learned it from and that the research they learned it from is like wrong. So, but I do know that I see people that are still eating, you know, taking out just the wheat, barley, and rye. I see them having thyroid problems and just a lot of other things that they can't explain, but they're living with, right? So um, everyone says they can't, you know, these other grains don't affect you, but, I mean, how do you really know that? Um, you, we didn't know gluten was affecting us in the first place, right? So, like, I mean, it can be the smallest thing in your body, and you can think it's stressed or something. So I am debunking a big myth. Um. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Have you um, thought about writing a book about this? About the myth of it or – um, no, I have, I have not written one, thought about writing one about the myth. Um, I do know um, a functional doctor that wrote a book, um, and he may have mentioned this in his book. Um, I can't tell you right now off the top of my head. But I have written a book, actually. Just um, I wrote a book about um, showing um, women, you know, basically just how to start it how to get started eating truly gluten-free. So it gives them really, you know, the step-by-step. But it doesn't give them all the information because there's really no way to put that all in a book, unfortunately. So um, there's, there's a lot of pieces that go to it. 
just because um, hidden sources and things like that, like once you find out that all gluten's in grains, it, it, and some of the sources can be really tricky, like something that you would never think about, you know, that you would, it just wouldn't seem like, oh, there can't be gluten in there. So, like what? Well, a good example um, is vanilla extract. So vanilla beans themselves are gluten-free. I mean, can't get gluten from those. But a lot of um, pot, um, packaged products um, all have vanilla extract in it. And um, if they extract the vanilla from the beans with grain alcohol, um, the distillers tell the you know the people that make the food that you know all of the proteins get distilled out of the um, alcohol, but there's no way that can happen because that's like saying you can take all the dirt particles out of the air. So. I mean, it is possible for people to even get sick from that. Um, and depending so, on your sensitivity level of it, you know, depending on your sensitivity level, you might be able to feel that or not feel it or, you know, it might be something that just causes inflammation in your body and you're not even realizing it. So, okay. Then, obviously, people are not eating um, straight vanilla extract. But I know for a fact that vanilla extract is in birthday cake. And I have a friend who I was at a birthday party with, and she has celiac disease. And mm. uh, one of her daughters has celiac disease. Well, anyway, when it came to the birthday cake, the daughter, no, she did not have a bite of it because of the celiac disease. Now, my question is to you, Connie, is does that have something to do with the vanilla extract put in cake, or what is that? Or why she didn't eat it, or why, uh-huh. why would a person with um, celiac disease shy away from birthday cake? That's, um, I don't know. I can't really answer that question because I don't know what the cake was made out of. Um, I haven't spoken to um, the person that you're speaking about with. Like, um, I would want to know every, you know, I'd want to talk to her and just know everything about her allergies and, and things like that. And probably through that, I would find out, you know, why she didn't eat that cake. But, I mean, I I can't answer it because I don't know what the cake was made out of, and I don't have all that information. Um, But, but, you know, that's fascinating that gluten is in vanilla extract. It can be. It all depends if it's made from grain alcohol. Now, at least in the States, okay. there, is a, there is a brand of vanilla extract made with non, non-grain non alcohol. So, you know, it wouldn't have that in it. So it's really, it depends about the, it, it all depends on the process of it. If it's made with grain alcohol or if it's made with like a non-grain alcohol. So like there is, there is some vanilla extract. And a lot of companies are actually starting to just use vanilla bean in it and not, you know, extract it in liquid form. Um, so, I mean, it's a lot of, you know, it's a lot of knowing um, just what to eat, you know, and there's a lot of cross-reactant foods. Um, and a big part that I um, coach, you know, my uh, my clients on is mindset. So there's a lot of pieces to it. Yeah. So when you're talking about cross-reactant foods, i.e., what mm-hmm. are they? Um, just to give you an example, uh, quinoa is something that is um, supposed to be, you know, safe for people that are celiac or gluten intolerant. And I don't really make a big distinction, just so your listeners know, between celiac and gluten intolerant because, you know, we both, celiacs have to eat gluten intolerant. And if you're gluten intolerant, you have to eat gluten intolerant, right? <laughs> yeah. Either way, we eat the same way. Um, yeah. 
So um, quinoa is, um, you know, technically gluten-free. The, um, the problem that lies within quinoa is, one, it can be cross-contaminated, like on equipment when manufacturers are, you know, are box, you know, are packaging it up or processing it, right, however they do that. Because a lot of times they can have wheat, you know, or other, um, I mean, they could have wheat protein, which, or, or corn or, or whatever it is on the same conveyor, you know, equipment, so that could cross-contaminate it. And, and um, the other thing with quinoa is, too, that a lot of scientific research is showing that your gut reacts to it just like it does gluten. So if you eat quinoa, your gut's going to see it as gluten, and you're going to have the same reaction. So if you're gluten intolerant, you're going to get sick. And I can say from my own personal experience, I have experienced this so before I knew this. Yeah. So, yeah. So, Okay. Now, I'm going to be a real layman here, and I'm sorry, but this is for my listeners. Is there such a thing as an EpiPen if someone eats gluten and gets violently ill? Is there such a thing as an EpiPen that could save them or absolutely not? So if you're talking about a gluten intolerance, um, Reaction, you, people don't normally have acute ones, like what you're talking about, like milk or peanuts or things like that. I've never heard of someone having, you know, something. They could have some – I've never heard anyone have a reaction where they needed EpiPen for gluten intolerance because it's not the same thing as, like, a, a milk allergy or peanut allergies where you have acute reactions. Um, so there's not an EpiPen for something like that. And if you eat gluten and you get sick, and it even really, really sick, because I've had experience that too, sometimes people, you know, I've never heard anyone, I mean, people may go to the ER or something, but there's not really anything they can give you to, you know, do anything about the gluten. It really just has to work through your body. So, I mean, usually if you're gluten intolerant, you just, you're sick for however you know, and that can vary in length of time and how you react to because everyone reacts to it differently according to their body and yeah. the sensitivity of it, right? So you're just, I'm sorry, but you're just going to have to let Mother Nature take its course and there's nothing you can do if you eat a French fry and your gluten intolerant or have celiac disease. There's nothing you can do. Just avoid you. Gluten. Well, avoiding gluten is the best thing you can do or any, you know, anything that can make you sick or cross reactions or anything like yeah. that. Um, and there are things like drinking bone broth, you know, drinking golden milk and things like that that can help your gut in the healing process that are really good for your gut and help it heal faster. Um, so they can help soothe it until, you know, and help your body recuperate. But, um, you know, they're not going to, like, get rid of it overnight, <laughs> unfortunately. Oh, boy. And if you um, don't mind me asking, what is your disability? What is your disability and when were you diagnosed with it? My disability... You mean from gluten or? Yeah, um, from gluten. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm gluten and I'm celiac too. So um, I was officially diagnosed back in, give me a second here, 2009. Um, but I didn't really... Um, and a lot of other people probably can share this as well. Like the first couple of, you know, doctors I went to, and mine were functional. So whether it be functional or, you know, ones that have gone through the Western medical program, um, I went to a few of them because they weren't well, – I found out bits, tidbits along the way, right, but they weren't really helping me get healthy and back to um, – you know, where I was feeling good again. So I 
for me, I, I kept, like, digging and digging, like, for information on the Internet and also looking for, like, you know, someone with the medical side that could give me a protocol that would actually help me get healthy. Um, because, you know, when I first found out, like, I thought it was just taking the food out, and then when I actually went to um, a functional doctor referred to me by a person in where I live at in Austin, um, he gave me, like, herbs and things like that, but, you know, he had me eating the traditional gluten-free diet. So I went down the same road just like everybody else. And, but then, you know, I figured out I wasn't getting better, so I, I took action to find someone different to go to. And that would actually give me a food allergy test, too, so I knew exactly what my, my allergies were besides gluten and corn. Does that so do you think – yes, it does. Do you think okay. traditional medicine is good as compared to a holistic medicine when it comes to gluten intolerance and celiac disease? So my personal opinion is that I would hmm, I would go to a functional doctor's first. And I know at least in the state that there's starting to be more – Western doctors that are starting to be more alternative or functional. So I think it's shifting. Um, so it really depends on where you live at and, you know, if, you know, like what your doctors are like better. Because I know it's shifting. So, you know, I, w- I would probably say seek out a functional doctor first. Um, so you think seek out to – Say go to holistic medicine and functional doctor before you do the before you do the traditional milk. That's what I would say. Yeah, alternative. Just because, still, for the most part, most Western doctors don't know a lot about food allergies, and that is shifting because a lot of them are taking more holistic looks at it, right? Um, but they just haven't been trained to look at, you know, what is at the core of, 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 you know, what is causing this. And they don't have, you know, very many er- um, very many hours of nutrition under their belt as well, which is very important since this is around food and how food affects your body and you want to take the right foods out and you may need to add some food in or vitamins, you know, you know, to help your body get healthy again, right? So, like, there's a lot of pieces to it. Like, I never knew you could have leaky gut until, you know, I finally went to a functional doctor that had the protocol where he really specialized in gluten intolerance and food allergies and, you know, with everything I already knew about it. And I, you know, I sort of had to put the rest together to get healed. But, um, you know, that was like a really big part of it besides the grains having gluten, you know, um, to start getting healthy on that. Like, um, you, you can have gluten affect all parts of the body, contrary to what probably what most people know when we think it's just the gut. I see. I see because the holistic doctors will um, go through out your whole body, whereas the traditional doctors will just give you a food test and send you on your way? For the most part, from what from what I've learned and heard. Um, but you also have to be very um, – either way you go, you need to be responsible because it's your health. And, and there are some functional doctors that don't know a lot about what to do around food allergies or gluten intolerance either. So, yeah. Well, that – now so then, was <laughs> in a rock and a hard place, Connie. Without people like you, people would be googling and googling and googling and googling and googling, and then they wouldn't find anything. This is very true. I mean, and and, and if you Google and Google around gluten intolerance, food allergies, there's just so much information, like anything else on the internet, right? It's like overload for our brains, and yeah. um, that's actually one reason I started my business. When because, like, I know when I was, you know, looking for information online, it was just overwhelming, 
And then you got confused, and then you didn't really know, like, where to start, which was really what information was accurate, what information was accurate. So it was sort of like, you know, testing on yourself. So, you know, I've really done all that work already for people, (laughs) so they don't have to. And I've probably made almost, you know, all the mistakes and and everything, and you know, experience-wise that someone could do from, you know, starting on the gluten-free diet, the, you know, the standard one where we just take out wheat, barley, and rye into learning, you know, I really need to take out grain. So I've really run the gamut of things so I can really coach, you know, women and hopefully, you know, take them through my step-by-step blueprint that they don't have to make all the mistakes I've had and, you know, slow down their healing process and spend a lot of money at different doctors or, you know, different foods and all those things that, like, I've already done and, and hopefully get them, you know, my, my my intention is to get them, you know, where they can eat, they can be responsible for themselves, you know, they switch their mindset, so, like, Without those two pieces together, it can be very, very challenging, more challenging than people think, um, to to switch to a completely gluten-free lifestyle. Well, thank you for doing what you're doing and getting people off Google, I swear. And now I'm with the mics get turned over to you, and you can ask me anything you want. Too. Okay. So, um, what, um, what got you, what, um, what, um, moved you to start a podcast? What moved me to start a podcast? Well, the same thing that moved you essentially to start your business and your blog and all this good stuff because what I'm learning is if you Google cerebral palsy, you will be going down a rabbit hole that you can't get out of. So this is what moved me to not only educate people, but interview inspirational leaders and get people off the Google train and be open and honest with my story with cerebral palsy. I think that's amazing. Um, and how has cerebral palsy, um, how has that shifted your life in a, in a, what opportunities has that, or is there a opportunity that has happened you feel like because of that, you know, and how it's really like, how can I ask this? I'll say it like this one. Sorry. I'm like lost on words. <laughs> I don't ever. Yeah. So, like, I look at it as um, gluten intolerance and food allergies. I look at them as the op- that was like a total opportunity for me to get healthy, right, and, it, and help yeah. other people. So what opportunity, um, besides creating a podcast, has that, has cerebral possibly given you? Or Well, I got to uh, – do the Kona Iron Man, and for those of you that don't know what the Kona Iron Man is, Google Team We Win, you'll find out more about that story, and so I am an ex Kona Iron Man triathlete. That's awesome. Wow. That's amazing. And so, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll Google um, Sailor Palsy Team We Win, and You'll see what um, that story is all about. So I, um, and a book on that is coming slowly but surely out. I'm working on that as well as soon as I finish my um, next book, the the accompaniment to my original book, I Come a Win. And so, like you, Connie, I had to start this process to get people off Google, to get people off Google to open up my story and share about cerebral palsy. In the meantime, in interview people like you who are changing the world. And I mean that seriously. 
No, I totally get that you mean that. Like, I just get the, like, love in your heart you have for, like, wanting to share people that have, that are out to change the world, um, like you. Yeah. Yeah. I totally, yeah. We spent, if we, you and I spent the day Googling on different diseases, mine being cerebral palsy and yours being gluten intolerance slash celiac disease, we would be going down rabbit holes like there's no small. Yes, <laughs> we would be. And we still could be going down those today. <laughs> yeah, we still could. And it's like when you have cerebral palsy, you really have to be, even though I don't have any food allergies, I don't have any stuff you do, but you still have to be really careful what you put in your mouth. Mm-hmm. Yes, that's and very true. So that's why I'm so open and honest about it. I could eat anything, but I can give me almond milk over legume milk, please, because it um, it does a number on my stomach. And when I have almond milk, the almond milk, doesn't seem to do a number on my stomach. I, I haven't been tested yet, but after talking to you, maybe I'll go um, find a functional doctor and see if I'm allergic to milk. Yeah, it sounds like you definitely, I would say you have a really good possibility of being it. So, because that's exactly how I used to react to milk, even as a child, so. Okay, even as a even as a child, I mm-hmm. can see that's the first time I admitted that on this podcast. So that's going to be my next little adventure <laughs> to figure out whether I'm allergic to milk or not. And give me almond milk and then make me a happy camper. But also, don't spend the time Googling, people. <laughs> if, you're, um, if you think your child has cerebral palsy, or if you think your child has celiac disease, or if you think your child is allergic to milk, come and reach out to a functional doctor, or a holistic doctor, or Connie, or myself, and we can guide you in the right direction. I can certainly guide you in the right direction about cerebral palsy. Connie can guide you in the right direction about celiac disease and gluten tolerance and then yeah we can help you google is a wonderful thing for two seconds not to diagnose yourself and don't run to the doctor you don't have to because these traditional medicine doctors all they're going to do is give you a food test and send you on their merry way yeah, and and that's a really good point you brought up when actually. So, like, just to all your listeners out there, all food allergy tests are not created equal. Um, and I know a lot of people, a lot of doctors um, recommend elimination diets. And um, my stance is really from my own experience and just from others I've known is that, you know, there is specific food allergy tests that are worth your time and money, and I've taken ones that were not worth my time and money and just stressed me out and didn't really help me figure out what I was, you know, having allergic reactions to. And, um, you know, the elimination diet might be good, I don't know, if you, if you do the eight major allergens. The problem comes in is when people are allergic to other things that are either considered good foods, you know, and, um, you know, on most elimination diets, I don't know, most doctors tell you to take out the eight major allergens. But I know personally I have some really uncommon food allergies, and I know some other people that do too that I would never have known if I probably would have done the elimination diet. Like I'm allergic to pork. I probably would have never thought about taking pork out, you know, maybe, maybe maybe down the road, but, you know, it's not one of the first things a doctor usually tells you to take out your diet, so. Oh, my God. So, <laughs> you know, people really have to reach out to you 
to guide them in the right direction because Dr. Google and I have um, a friendly relationship, but not that friendly because um, Dr. Google isn't helping me. And so um, <laughs> holistic, holistic medicine is more helping me than traditional medicine, quite frankly. And so, um, and I have adopted this with my own family, and I think that um, the traditional doctors, and I love my family dearly, but they are traditional doctors, and so I think the traditional doctors study pages out of medical textbooks and then diagnose everyone with diseases under the sun, and until you investigate your body further, you don't know what what is going on. No, and there's a lot. Nowadays, there's a lot of things that could be affecting your body, unfortunately, like the food, the environment, um, you know, because our environment's not that clean, unfortunately. Yeah. And, you know, if the EPA, if we didn't have the EAP, the EPA it definitely would be worse because companies, you know, they, they don't really look at if dumping in, you know, water or air. They're just looking at their bottom line. So that's really important for us to, you know, keep those hot standards we have. And, um, you know, one of the big things is, is like food is one of the things we can control. Um, we, ne- we can't necessarily control everything that's out in our environment. We can take actions to get it changed you know, to become cleaner. And, um, I mean, it's the same thing. Like, I tell my clients and I tell everybody I know, vote with your dollars, right? Vote with your dollars. That's what companies change from. And companies have been changing things because of what consumers are buying and not buying. So. Well, that's the way to end this interview. Vote with your dollars. And please, 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 we tell Connie or I, if you think you have any food allergies, don't be Dr. Google. Do not be Dr. Google, and do not ask your traditional doctor, can you help me, because they can send you, they can give me, give you a food allergy test and send you on the email way, and as Connie said, Food allergy tests are created, are created differently. Thank you very much. And so, Connie, where can the people find you, and how can the people reach you on social media? Um, they can find me at um, my website, which is glutenandfoodallergyspecialist.com. And um, the best ways to find me and on, and I, you know, start, if you want to ask me something in conversation-wise, is on Instagram or Facebook. On Instagram, I'm Gluten and Food Allergy Specialist. And on Facebook, I'm Gluten and Food Allergy Specialist. And I presume that all your social medias are hooked up to your website. Yes, they are. And, of course, we'll have everything in the show notes. And I appreciate Connie's time. I didn't realize I was getting into a needle in a haystack here, but um, Connie really shed shed some light on what's going on, and I'm super happy that she did. And so um, I just hope you guys enjoyed another fabulous episode, and today's sponsors are... Go Kidder, K-I-T-D-E-R. Kidder is a social media Twitter app, and Kidder can create hashtags for you and then get you seen on Twitter. And this podcast is also sponsored by Great by Grit. Great by Grit is a closing line out of California, and they're generously giving you 20% off. So you guys go check that out. And please, 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 if you find this episode valuable, share it with a friend, and then we can help change the world, Connie and I. Thanks, you guys. 
And thank you for having me on, Lynn. It was a real pleasure.